This right here behind me, this is a John boat that I fully restored. And in this video, you're gonna watch me do the whole thing from beginning to end. My subscribers are always telling me they wish they had a boat so they can go and make fishing videos like I do, but they just can't afford a boat. And I don't blame them because boats are super expensive, except for a John boat. Sometimes you can get a John boat for free or extremely cheap on places like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, maybe some newspaper ads for people that still use those. But basically a John boat is just an aluminum boat that when properly restored can pretty much do anything. The one behind me, I'm gonna be using for bully netting, fishing the flats, going back country in the Everglades, duck hunting, frog gigging, flounder gigging, fishing canals, going out to catch bait. And you know what? I might even take it offshore in another episode. But in this episode, we're gonna do the full restoration and I'm putting all the timestamps on here so you can see exactly where I do what, when I do what. If you wanna skip forward, skip back, skip to a part that you wanna rewatch, I'll add all the timestamps in the video description below. You can find them there. But don't go around skipping through the video too much because I got a little surprise. For my fans that love to watch my videos from beginning to end without skipping through, somewhere in this video is a code like this one, which is a gift card code to rwboutdoors.com where we got our South Florida Fishing Channel merch, fishing gear, and a bunch of other stuff. Somewhere in the video, you're gonna find this code. It'll probably be a different color. It might be a little smaller. It might be tilted to the left or right. But somewhere in this video, you can find this code and then you can do a little bit of shopping. But anyways, let's just jump right into the video, which takes us a couple months back when I first purchased this John boat. So strap on your seatbelt because we're about to jump in a time machine, go back in time to when I first got this bad boy and let's get started. Two months earlier. So I just bought a John boat. I've never done a boat restoration or anything like this before. So I'm going to try to make this video in a way to where if I can do it, you can do it too. This right here is an old John boat that I found on Facebook marketplace. How old do you think this boat is? Just think of a number in your head. This right here. <laughs> you ready for this? This is a 1985 14 foot tracker grizzly. Step one is find yourself an old John boat. Find yourself one that you like. I was originally going to get a 12 foot one, but I'm going to be doing a lot of backcountry stuff where I'm driving at least 10 miles. So I figured I was going to just get a slightly bigger John boat. This is the 14 foot. 16 foot is starting to get a little bigger. I have an offshore boat, so I don't, I don't need really a big boat. So I think the 14 foot is the perfect size. Once you have your John boat, I would say the second step would be to make sure it's waterproof. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off all the like loose screws. I'm gonna take this front deck off. I'm gonna take the live well hatch off. I'm gonna take the transom mount off, the transom reinforcement plates. I'm gonna take those off. All these random hooks. I'm gonna take the handlebars off. I'm just gonna strip the boat down to its bare minimum because we're gonna paint it. But before we paint it, I'm gonna fill it up with water just to make sure it's um, waterproof. There's no holes, no leaks in it. After we do that, we're gonna strip all the old paint off of it. By the looks of it, there's one layer, there's the original coat, then there's a yellow, there's a black, then there's this camo paint over it. This boat from 1985 has probably been painted three or four times by various owners. So I'm going to strip off all the old paint and then repaint it. I want to put a nice protective coat on the bottom, some kind of epoxy. I'm not totally sure yet, but I want this thing to be super sturdy, super slick. If I hit a log, I'll fly right over it. So we'll be armoring the bottom of it, basically painting the exterior, painting the interior. I'll probably put some kind of EVA foam, some kind of like sea deck material on these benches here to make it more comfortable to sit on and stand on. I'm going to build a floor and then some more sea deck material on top of that. I'm not sure what colors I'm gonna pick yet, but you'll see in this video. This video is gonna be everything from start to finish. Once the whole of the boat is done with paint and decking and all that, then I'm gonna start adding some accessories like put an engine on this. I'm not totally sure what engine yet, but I think we got a special surprise for the engine. This trailer is also from 1985, but it looks pretty good. I strapped on my GoPro so you can watch everything I do. First thing I'm gonna do is just clean the boat. Look at what is inside of this boat. I don't know how long this fish has been in there, 
I don't even know what kind of fish that is, but he's been in that boat for a long time. There is a lot, just a lot of stuff in here. I'm gonna start with taking out like a rusty screw, dirt, like rocks and dirt and I don't know what all this is, but it's time to clean her on out. The screws are out. There is this like a uh, cock in here, but oh, there's <laughs> I think there's a creature in there. All right, oh, okay, there's creatures. I wonder when the last time was that this was opened up. All right, okay. Hmm, interesting. Huh. This is thicker aluminum. This is a little thinner. Oh, there's foam under the front there. There's a big foam block under this. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take all this cock off. So this plastic deck, I want to see if it's comfortable to stand on. I mean it's soft. Woo! It's freaking hot though. Ooh. I don't, that's, you gotta wear shoes on that. Hmm. Oh, look at that. A Heineken bottle top. At least I know the previous owners had a good time. All right, I put the drain plug in the boat. There it is. Drain plug is plugged. Gonna fill it with water and hopefully it doesn't leak anywhere. That would be a little bit of a problem. Captain, we're taking on water. I'll be honest, I don't even want to look if it's stripping or not, but here I go. So far, no signs of water. Looks good. Well, since it's full of water, I might as well add some of this Force 5 industrial strength cleaner. I want to definitely get all the dirt off of here and just just keep the boat like a really good soapy degreasing. See all that black stuff down there? It's like dirt that's just been on there forever. Okay, I got a lot of water in here now. It's pretty much about that high above here. and there are no drips. So I know that there's no water that's gonna be getting into the boat when we're just, when it's just floating on the water. There's no holes below the water line. That's really good to know. Um, I looked around, I didn't see any holes or anything. So 
Nice. Step one, I bought myself a John boat, check mark. Step two, I filled it up with water, made sure there's no uh, holes, make sure it's gonna float. I got a floating John boat. That's good to know. Now it's time to just clean this smudging smudge out of it. I'm gonna pressure wash it. I'm gonna put paint stripper on it. I'm gonna sand it, get all the old paint off. Open the floodgates, Johnny. Mm. Steady fire. <laughs> time to do some pressure washing. <laughs> That's an electric pressure washer, by the way. That's looking real good. I wonder if the pressure washer would get the paint to come off the side here. We're gonna need something stronger. This is a pretty blunt knife. I'm just running along. I'm trying to free some of this. There's so much caulking on here. Pressure wash the front, got all the caulk off. Now I'm gonna take out the live well. Okay, that's the lid. Oh, and this is the live well bucket, okay. <laughs> Starting to wonder if it was even worth trying to take the handles off. Yeah, I think it's gonna be worth it. I got the handles off and you can see like the transom. There's a piece of wood in this transom here and some of the wood's exposed. And I mean this hole, that wood is definitely rotten in there. It just comes right out. Hmm. Hmm. Is that worth replacing? I'm gonna have to think about that. It might be okay, I mean, it. You know, I can feel the wood down here. It's kind of coming apart too. I'm gonna have to put some serious thought into this. Might have to, you know, I don't want to skimp out here. I want this to be good, so. Hmm. I think the transom, it's definitely, the wood inside of this transom is definitely rotted. But the only way to get to it is by taking these punch holes out. I don't have the tools for that, but my friend might be able to help me with that. So he might come, he might help me with this. But for now, I got myself some paint thinner. I'm gonna coat it on the boat, wait 15, 20 minutes, and then hopefully scrape off all the old paint. That is some gooey stuff. Oh wow, the paint's already coming off. I'm literally gonna cover the entire boat in this paint thinner. Yeehaw. 
That paint stripper has been um, soaking for almost 20 minutes now. And this paint right here that the boat is painted in, I think this is the original color of the boat. So this paint has been on here for, dang, what is that, over 35 years now? It comes off a little bit. Yeah, you can see it's it's coming off. So what I'm I'm just gonna scrape it as good as I can. This paint's already just dripping off. Like the black is starting to bubble up. That's that's a good sign. Oh yeah, that's gonna come off. So I'll scrape it all. Then I'm gonna wash it all off, and um, then I'm gonna take the sandpaper to it. I got this Gator powered sandpaper thing. I can use my power drill with. Yeehaw. I'll be scraping, I'll be scraping. That paint thinner is starting to do some work. Look at it. Oh. Whoa. Okay then. Heck yeah. I just need more paint thinner. That second layer of stripper really made a big difference. Look at that. I don't even think I'm gonna have to sand that much. I got a long way to go, but it's coming along. It's coming along. Man, stripping all this paint off is one heck of a task. But if I'm going to put this much work into this boat, I also decided that the rotten wood in the transom definitely needs to be replaced. So my buddy Austin comes over to help me remove the rivets that are holding the entire transom together. To remove a rivet, first we poke a small hole into it. And then we drill a slightly bigger hole into it. And finally, we drill an even bigger hole until the whole rivet just pops loose. Then we take a pneumatic rivet gun and punch out the remaining rivet. Oh, one and go. done. <laughs> there, there it is. There's a total of 12 rivets we need to remove just like this for the transom to come off. Let's see how bad this wood is. Not only was the transom wood rotten, but the aluminum had some corrosion too. I'm about halfway done sanding the interior sides, 
I still need to do the floor and phew, man, I'm realizing that prepping the boat for painting is harder than the actual painting itself. But we're just gonna have to man through this. There's a lot of paint that needs to be stripped and sanded off. It's been like, oh, I've lost count of days already. I think I've been working on this boat for like six days straight. Here's what's been done. I went to Lowe's and I got some new wood. Two pieces, another piece for the flooring. Ooh, look at that shiny transom. I sanded all the old paint off the back of the transom and on the inside of the transom. Now, if you look at the transom, there's these 20 or 30 of these really tiny, tiny holes. I mean, some of them are just incredibly tiny. That hole right there. My buddy Austin, who is just over here, he's actually kind enough. He's gonna weld all of those little tiny holes shut with aluminum. Three days later. I gotta give a huge thank you to Austin. He came over here, he showed us how to take the rivets out. He's gonna show us how to put new rivets in, but I dropped the boat off with him and he welded. So all those little holes and just kind of the weak spots on the transom, he welded all of this back with some new aluminum and kind of reinforced the whole thing. There's a couple like small holes that were right here in the side. He welded all that on. Thanks, Austin. And uh, he actually just left and helped me flip the boat over. So it's sitting on these. It's sitting on these, um, what are they called? Like elephant feet or, I don't know, wood supports, wood frames. So what we're gonna do now, oh yeah. Now what I'm gonna do is just strip all the paint off the bottom and check this out. I gotta give a huge shout out to Fasco. I got all of their epoxy resin. Part one, this is the, uh, this is the Fasco epoxies, the uh, Steel Flex Super Slick. Apparently, from what I've read online, this is the best, freaking, just the best stuff you could put on the bottom of your John boat. It's meant for air boats, apparently, but. And it's so slick that if you put on your uh, vinyl decals for your registration number, they'll just slide off. So this is just the bottom of the boat. Then I got another epoxy. This is the neutral steel flex. So it's not like super, super slippery, I guess. And that's gonna be the exterior of the boat on the outside and on the interior of the boat. The bottom of the boat, I got this black pigment. So the bottom of the boat will be black and then the rest of the boat will be this beige color. I'm really excited to see how that turns out. We gotta finish prepping the boat and then we'll talk more about making the boat look good. I pour on and spread a bunch of paint stripper to the bottom of the boat. And if I had to do this project all over again, I would recommend just using an orbital sander because this paint stripper stuff is expensive and I have to use a ton of it. And sometimes I gotta do two layers of it and it still doesn't get all the paint off. And in the end, I end up sanding the aluminum before painting it anyways. So I might as well have just sanded it all off to begin with. At this point of the boat restoration, I still don't own an orbital sander yet. So you're just gonna have to bear with me. If you know me, you know that I like to learn things the hard way. Dang, she's starting to look real good. I took as much paint off of her as I could with the paint stripper and the pressure washer. There's still a little bit of paint left, but I'm just gonna sand whatever's left because whatever is left really doesn't want to come off. But nothing some sanding can't get rid of. Just look at, look how much progress we've made. You got a little paint here and there, but for the most part, I pretty much got all the paint off the bottom. Uh, this side, there is a little bit of paint there, but. That should be easy sanding. I had a really tough time getting these letters off. So, definitely gonna need to be sanded. This right here is the old plug to the live well, which is in the bench. And this was the uh, entrance to it. So this is actually the new one that I just got. I'm gonna put it in there. I'm gonna seal it with some 5200. 
And on top of that, I'm gonna be sealing it with the Fasco Super Slick Steel Epoxy on top of that, so it should be super watertight. You definitely don't want this breaking off. If this ever broke off, you got a hole in your boat the size of a half dollar. You probably sink pretty quick with a hole like that. So we want this to be super, super secure in there. This other end kind of screws down. So that'll be screwed on like this, and then I'll cut it wherever wherever the line is on the live well. There's the hole on the live well. Maybe I'll paint the inside of this bucket like a nice white or something. I add the 5200 sealant, and then I wipe off whatever's left. That remaining bit you see there comes right off with some acetone. My buddy Austin lets me borrow his orbital sander, and this thing does work. I've been sanding for about, I've been sanding all day now. I think six hours and I'm done. The top is completely stripped of paint, sanded and ready to go. Tonight, I'm gonna wash it down with water, get all the paint sanding dust off of it. Then in the morning, we're gonna rub it down with some acetone and then we're gonna put our Fasco Steel Flex super slick and best of the we're gonna put that on the bottom tomorrow we're gonna make her real slick look how shiny she is it's finally time Put the Fasco epoxies on the boat. We're about to paint this sucker. Well, we're actually, we're only gonna paint the bottom of the boat. With, for that, we're gonna use this right here. This is the Fasco epoxies, steel flex, super slick epoxy coating. Um, this is part one, and this is the part two. You mix them equal parts. And basically, this is supposed to be a super slick like it says, super, super slick with the black epoxy pigment. You wanna mix the pigment with the part two and then you wanna mix part one into it and then they start reacting and that's when you wanna slap it on the bottom and let it dry. Okay, before we start painting the surface here, we wanna outline the whole top in just blue tape. That way the black steel epoxy doesn't run off the bottom and onto the side of the boat, which is going to be using a different type of paint and a different color. Not sure the best way to do this, but I guess I'll just start. The tape is on and it yeah, basically just outlines the entire bottom of your John boat. Depending on your John boat, it might have a different shape to it. This one's very wide in the back and has kind of a V pattern in the front. Boy, have we come a long way and it's fi the final step. We're going to take some acetone, well, the final step in prepping the boat for painting. We're going to take some acetone here and just take some paper towels and clean the entire surface that we're about to paint here. I got everything taped off. The acetone is going to take any grease off from fingers touching it or any of that, any dirt that might be left on here. The acetone is going to make sure the surface is extremely clean 
and that the new epoxy is going to stick to it real well. Here we go. Painting time. It's been a long time coming. Okay, acetone. I guess I'll kind of just... Glop it on there and rub it in. Good, look at all that dirt coming off. I want to make sure I do this real well. I might even go over the whole surface twice. Getting a lot of dirt off of here. I think we're just about done though. Here's part of the old transom. Get rid of that. This is where things get a little interesting. The first thing I'm gonna do is take the super slick part two epoxy, put 16 ounces. Yeah, I'll put 16 ounces of that in here. And then I'll add the black pigment until it looks nice and black. Okay. Oh yeah. Goopy. So first we're gonna add 16 ounces of this part two and then we're gonna mix the black color pigment into the part two. I just hit 16 ounces perfectly. That that must be my stroke of luck today. I don't know how that was, that, that was perfect. Put that lid back on. Now I'm gonna add the black pigment. I didn't exactly measure how much of the pigment I put in, but I would say roughly a fifth of this little jar. And I guess I'll just mix it and see what happens. In the future, I find that using a wooden uh, paint mixer stick is a lot easier and cleaner than using this drill. It's starting to turn black, yeehaw. Oh yeah, there we go. It just turned real nice and black. Okay, so you just need a tiny bit of pigment. I thought for a second maybe I didn't use enough, but that's a pretty good looking black in there. I'm just gonna mix it for like a minute or two and it looks pretty well mixed, but I just want to make sure. There she is, 16 ounces of part two mixed with the pigment. Now I'm gonna pour 16 ounces of the part one into here. Then I'll mix those 16 ounces in there. It's 50-50. We'll mix it up and then it's painting time. Later on, I end up realizing I could have just poured both part one and two in one bucket and saved the bucket next time. I'm gonna mix the two. Just mix that on up. I'm gonna say that's probably good. All right, let's start painting. We don't have much time. Oh man, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I guess I'll just start with a glob. That looks better. Should I just be using more paint? Maybe that's what I gotta do. More paint. Although this first layer is supposed to be a light layer, so... Man, I don't know what I'm doing here. I've never been good at painting. Looking back on this, I would say it's definitely okay to use a thick and heavy layer for the first layer. That way your second layer will finish the job perfectly. Made a bit of a mess here. And definitely when you have any dripping epoxy like this, definitely wipe it away when it's still wet because when it dries, it ain't going anywhere. We got a culprit. Look at that a little stick. From the freaking ceiling. Oh man. Oh, I wish I had tweezers. 
Oh, I'm gonna mess it up for sure. Oh man. Damn. Damn. Well, the good thing this is just the first layer. It's been drying for like an hour and a half. Almost two hours. And it's looking real slick. It's already kind of, it's pretty much dried. I'm gonna give it about another 30 minutes. Even this part here where I put on a very thin layer, feels pretty nice. It's already real slick, it hasn't even dried. I'm gonna put a real thick second coat on this in about a half an hour and then, then like, like some of these parts are like super slick and nice. And after the second coat, the whole thing's gonna just be a freaking piece. I was a little messy right here. Uh, I'm gonna try to be a little more artistic and take it, just take it a little bit slower. Second coat's on. I might even put a third coat on there. It looks good, but I want it to look real good. Once it dried after the second layer, it actually came out pretty perfect. So I don't think there's a need for a, a third layer. And dang, this is gonna look sleek once I pull that tape off. I did make a little bit of mess on the front and stuff, but I have to sand the old paint off anyways. So that's not a problem. And I really globbed on this epoxy right here at the entrance to the bait well. So this thing is seriously, seriously waterproof. I couldn't be happier. That is slick. Peeling the tape off was a little more time intensive than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna peel right off, but the epoxy is so hard, sometimes the blue tape gets stuck under the epoxy. Sometimes it came off super easy. You know, if you wanted to make it really easy, you could just paint the bottom of your John boat the same color as the side and inside of your John boat, and you wouldn't have to worry at all about putting tape down. But I was trying to build something sleek, and sometimes you pay the price when you want to have two different colors, but the contrast ends up being real nice. The next day I whip out the orbital sander and spend some time just sanding off the rest of the paint on the exterior of the boat. And then we just gotta paint the outside. We can flip the boat and get her done on the inside. I can already smell the fish getting flopped on the deck. We're getting there. making 
some headway here. I'm basically gonna do exactly what I did before. Tape off the edges around the black, rub the sanded down aluminum with acetone, get all the dirt and grease off of it. And then we're gonna paint it the neutral steel flex epoxy beige colored, which is pretty much the same thing as this black epoxy. It's just not super, super slick. So vinyl decals and all the other stuff will stick to it. You wanna make sure that you're putting this tape on the bottom, making sure that there's a little bit of the crevice that's gonna be painted on the beige. So that way when your boat's sitting in the water, there's not this awkward little black line. It's gonna be nice and flat. And I'm having a little problem where this, this tape won't stick at all. I, I barely have it sticking on there. Like it'll, I'm worried the wind will blow it off. Nothing sticks to it. But we'll try here. What's up, buddy? Once again, I outlined the entire bottom of the boat. And man, it took a lot of tape and a lot of time. And I'm really starting to think maybe I should have just painted this whole boat the same color and then not really worried about these lines. But it's looking pretty sharp. Let's make some epoxy and let's get started. All right, we're gonna mix paint again. And there's a few things that I've learned. I was wasting two buckets before. Like, wait a minute. I'm gonna just mix part two and the pigment in this bucket up to the 16 ounce line. And then I'll just add up to the 32 ounce line of, of the part one. And I can just mix it all in one bucket. And I only use one bucket. I don't know why I was using two buckets before. How did the type of roller that I'm gonna be using. So originally I used this one high density foam which was a bad idea because the foam starts to break and then you get all these foam flakes on your epoxy and you spend hours picking them off before it dries so this time i'm going to use a nap woven i wanted to get a quarter inch but all they had was the uh, 3 8 inch so i went with that this shouldn't fall apart on me that's our part two the neutral steel flex epoxy coating so it's not super slick which means I can stick stuff to it. I might paint a camo pattern on it at some point. And we'll mix it here with this beige color pigment. And for mixing, I just got this drill with a little, little mixer. Yeehaw. Part two, and we'll do 16 ounces. Try not to make a mess here. I can't promise anything. All right, 16 ounces, here we go, one pint. Right on the money. Whew, I'm, I'm getting good at this. Hey, I might start painting boats for a living. This ain't so bad. I'm doing this for fun. Imagine I was getting paid. You know, this epoxy almost looks beige already, so probably don't need to use that much pigment. But we'll see here. It's our beige pigment. It. It already looks beige. That's kind of funny. All right, that is probably more than enough. Look how slick I am. I didn't waste any this time. I made a mess last time I did this. We'll mix it slowly. Well, it turned like a lighter beige color. Set that right there. And then we're gonna add our part one. 16 ounces of part one. This stuff is like crystal clear. We are truly becoming professionals together. You and I. Now we'll mix that up and then we're ready to paint.
All right, all right. I got the first coat of the beige on. Some things came up. I was never able to put a second coat on it, and that was a couple days ago. It's dried now, and today I'm putting on the second coat, and hopefully the second and the last coat, and then we're gonna be done. There's only one thing I'm doing different. When I put the first coat on, I used the 3 8 inch nap. Well, I went to the store today and they had the quarter inch nap rollers which I originally wanted and they had them. So now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use these guys. Man, I gotta say, the beige and the black, the contrast, it's looking good and it's looking exactly how I was hoping. I think these two colors are gonna blend real good together. And this bad boy is gonna look real good. That super slick bottom on that John boat made that slide onto the trailer so smoothly. I instantly knew I made the right decision. Looking good. All right, now what we're gonna do is make the floorboards for the John boat. I like to work with templates. So I just used the one that was already on the boat and outlined it and that'll be the bow of the boat. Then I cut my trace out and it's ready to go. This one was the easiest floor to make. The two floor panels that we're gonna make next were a little bit harder to make the outlines for. All right, she's good to go. If you have any troubles fitting the wood on your John boat, you can just give a little sanding to whatever spots are giving you problems and that should usually fix it and it'll slide right in. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right, time for the other two floorboards. The way that I'm gonna make a template for these is to use some cardboard and basically I just cut the cardboard in the shape of the floor and make these cutouts where your aluminum support brackets go along the sides of your boat here and just make the cutout 
and get yourself a nice snug good looking little template going once the template is in the bottom of your boat and it looks good then you're ready to trace it on the wood and cut it out and i do give you a forewarning most likely it's not going to be perfect and, and you're going to have to do a little bit of sanding at the end roughen out some edges and get it to fit smoothly and perfectly but it can be done have no fear First, I line it up on the wood to where one edge is going to be perfectly straight. Then I take my red Sharpie, nice bright line, and outline it. After it's outlined, simply cut it. The first cut, I use a circular saw and just make a nice straight cut off of the floor. Then I use a jigsaw to cut out the square cutouts where the aluminum brackets are going to sit in. Once I get that floor done, I do the same exact thing for the third and last floorboard, which is going to be right behind the bow of the boat. Going to outline it the same way and cut it out. This time I start with the jigsaw, cut all the bracket notches out, and then like a crazy man, I use the circular saw to make a straight cut. I know this looks dangerous, but this is just how we do things in the keys. Got all the wood platforms in. Solid. Now I'm going to take out the floorboards and sand them down because we're going to put some coats of paint on them. Make sure they get waterproofed so that way they last a nice long time and also look better, of course. I make sure the entire surface of the floors get a, a light sanding, nothing serious. You also want it to be nice and soft so there's no splinters. All right, I got all the floors laid out. Time to give them a little paint. Here I have this 2X Ultra Cover paint primer from Rust-Oleum Black. Figured a couple of coats of this should help waterproof the bottom of the floorboards. Remember, this is the bottom of the floorboards. The top of the floorboards, we're gonna put in an epoxy and then stick on some sea decking foam. Roughly, it takes me about one can of this spray paint per floor per coat. So if I want to put three coats on one floorboard, it's going to take me three cans for that floorboard. As I'm putting on this black spray paint, it looks really good, but it's going on pretty thin. So for it to actually waterproof it, I think it's going to need a lot of layers, like four, five, six, or even more layers. Damn it. Not on the wet paint. What? Are you kidding me? What the heck? After that sudden rainstorm, I managed to get my boards dry again and put a total of three layers on each floorboard. That's a total of nine cans, and it still doesn't feel completely waterproof. I should have just used epoxy. Oh, and I still got to sand the entire inside of the John boat. In order to help waterproof the bottom of these floorboards, I'm going to use this crystal clear enamel spray paint. It's clear, and it's also from Rust-Oleum. I'm going to put a total of two coats of this on each floorboard, hoping once again that this is just going to help make it more waterproof and make it last longer. Do y'all remember what this is? 
It's the old transom from the beginning of the video that we took out. And we're going to make a brand new transom. So once again, I'm outlining the old transom using that as the template. Now the old transom was made out of two pieces. So I'm also gonna cut two pieces out and end up gluing them together because they don't sell plywood in the thickness that we need. So that's why we're gluing two pieces together. There we have it. If we cut this out, we'll have two nice transom pieces. Gonna use the circular saw to make the initial straight cuts. Actually, I'm gonna use the circular saw for this entire thing. And there we have it. That's the new transom. But there's only one little problem. The two pieces of wood that I have are bigger than the old two pieces of wood. That means it's not gonna fit in the current transom. Luckily, my buddy Alec has a planer and we sand down the entire transom, about a quarter inch. This was a bit of a slow and painful process, sanding down this much plywood, but we didn't really have another choice. Now that we have our two pieces of the transom, we're gonna clean them up a bit, and we're gonna add our Fasco Epoxy's Epoxy Glue Resin. It's a part one and two, you mix them 50-50, and that transom ain't never coming apart again. So I'll just try to do 50-50. And due to us rocking out like rock stars, I gotta do a voice over here or else I'm gonna get content copyrighted. But I'll add some of my own music so you can jam out with me here. But anyways, I'm putting 50% part one, 50% part two of this uh, epoxy glue, mixing it up with a paint wood stick, which is actually officially my favorite way of mixing epoxies. And then I kinda just drizzle it all over the transom while my buddy here uses a paintbrush to evenly spread it across the entire surface of the wood. Look at us go. True workers determined to catch some fish on a john boat. Maybe shoot some ducks, get some frogs, maybe get a gator. I didn't get my gator tag this year, but maybe next year. This is a good time and I'm loving every second of it. Once all the glue is spread around everywhere, we just flip the two boards together, squish. That's looking pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is clamp the two pieces together. We're using these pieces of wood to help produce an even clamp. Get those on there real nice and tight. That way when the glue dries overnight, this transom is really gonna be stuck. Stuck together, stuck hard, more clamps, more better. We're freaking doing it. Look at that, that thing looks legit. The next morning, the glue is dried and I take all the clamps off. I sand down the edges a bit. Some of the glue came out the sides, so you just sand that off. And I also want a nice rounded and polished ends. That also helps make it more waterproof. I also sand the top of all the floorboards because we're about to put an epoxy over the floors and the transom that will make it completely waterproof. And here it is. This is the Fasco Epoxy's LVX Epoxy Steel Low Viscosity Epoxy. And unlike their other epoxies, instead of doing 50-50 of part one and two, you do two thirds part one and one third part two. We're gonna mix these up and then cover all the floorboards in it and the entire transom in it. And it's gonna completely waterproof and seal the wood, which should give these floorboards a really long lifetime. And I should hopefully never have to see any kind of wood rot on the floors or the transom. First, we take our part one and we're gonna pour two quarts into this cup. Bloop, 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 bloop. I'm adding some sound effects. Then we're gonna take part two and add one quart of part two, giving us a total of three quarts. Yeah, right on the money there. Perfect. Now we're gonna mix that up. It seems to mix pretty easily, and before I know it, it's good to go. 
and I start to droop it on the transom. As I droop it on, we're also gonna use a paintbrush and just brush it on. We're gonna do that to the transom and all the floorboards. Time to start laying some epoxy. raining outside and this has been drying for about 14 hours now it needs a little more time to dry maybe another eight hours but it's already hard like it's hard <laughs> it's not like three layers of black paint and two layers of clear coat this still feels like wood but this doesn't feel like wood at all it just feels like a like a hard flat smooth surface I guess that's why they call it freaking steel that's what it feels like completely waterproof transom I'd say it's worth flipping them right I agree well the three coats of black primer and paint and two coats of clear coat I put on the bottom of the floorboards are pretty much worthless. I decided that if I actually want this wood to be waterproof and for it to last a long time, I'm gonna have to also put some of this epoxy on the bottom of the floorboards. So we flip the transom over, all the floors over. I mix up another three quarts of the good stuff. Actually, I did a little bit more this time and we're gonna cover it all once again. And boy, these floors are gonna look good when they're done drying. All right, and while those platforms are drying, I'm gonna spend the rest of the day and finish sanding the bottom and the inside of the John boat. Things are coming together, boys. It actually ended up taking more like two days to sand everything, but it got done. That's all that matters. It got done. The first thing that I do once everything is sanded is I tape off the transom where the wood's gonna lay against. And I'm just gonna add a couple of coats of this truck bed liner stuff. I figure that it'll keep the aluminum from corroding as fast and just add a little extra support back there, especially with the wood laying up against the aluminum. At the end of the day, I'm just hoping that it helps slow down corrosion. So this John boat's gonna be epic for decades to come. I also painted the inside of the transom plate black. So this way the wood inside the transom will never actually be touching any aluminum and there will be no aluminum on aluminum surfaces, which will cut down on corrosion and should make this thing last for many years to come. And I think now I'm gonna remove the tape and time to do some transom work. I put the transom into the plate, the backing plate. I'm not actually sure what that's called, but it's time to do some rivets. And I suggest if you've never done rivets before, maybe contact some friends, find someone that's done this before because it sure helps. My buddy Austin here, he's currently pre-drilling the existing rivet holes, and then he's going to give it a little bit of a sanding because you want the rivet to connect with the aluminum and not the epoxy. There's a total of 12 rivet holes that's going to hold this aluminum backing plate to the transom of the boat. I found it easier to put the wood in first and then add the aluminum backing sheet. There we go. Yes. All right. Woo. If you're wondering what the black outlined areas are on the aluminum sheet, Anywhere where aluminum is going to be on aluminum, I put a couple layers of truck bed liner, hoping it'll prevent some corrosion between the two metals being on top of each other. We have all 12 rivet holes sanded and ready to go, and we start to insert some of the rivets through the two pieces of metal. I'm on the inside of the boat, and I'm holding a metal block to the end of the rivet, while Austin uses the aircraft rivet gun to punch the rivet end. One, two, three. Yep. One, two, three. Another 
time. One, two, three. One last time. One, two, three. All right, looks good. I'll try my best to explain exactly what's going on here. So Austin is under the boat right now. He just put a rivet through the bottom of the boat and through this bracket. And I'm holding a heavy piece of metal against one end of the rivet. And as Austin uses the rivet gun to smash his end of the rivet, the rivet on my end gets smushed flat, creating a watertight seal between the two pieces of aluminum. Yeah. I think that's good. That one. This is this is this side. Bottom. Time to rivet on the brackets. Three, two, one. Go again. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. All right, that's good. Oh yeah. Oh, those look good. There we go, brand new rivets, and I'll end up putting epoxy over them. Ready? Three, two, one. Go again. Two, one. Good. Good? Yep. Sweet. Austin's drilling holes through the transom that match where the old holes are for us to mount the additional support aluminum plates. We actually end up cutting this aluminum plate in half, but I didn't actually get video of us doing that. But later on, you'll see that it's only about half as big. We're gonna finish up the transom in a little bit, but first I take some acetone, I clean the surface of the bow of the boat and make sure it's nice and clean because we're about to start painting the floor of the boat. And for paint, I'm using truck bed liner. I figure since we're gonna have floors over this, I wasn't going to need the epoxy, but it ends up taking almost 10 cans of this truck bed liner to do the entire bottom of the John boat. So it actually would have been cheaper to just use the epoxy, which would have also been stronger, but it's all right. Floorboards are going to be covering this anyways. All right, progress on the John boat is coming along smoothly. I went ahead and painted the bottom here already with the same truck bed liner as I did the top here. I taped off the sides so only the bottom gets painted. Today, I'm going to try and do the center, I think, the back. But before I do the back, I was gonna take some of the Fasco epoxies and just put it, put it on this area here because that's where the rivets are to the bottom of the boat. And I just wanna give it some extra water protection. The truck bed liner is nothing compared to the uh, Fasco epoxy. Honestly, the truck bed liner is more just to look better but the epoxies, they actually waterproof it, they harden it, they give it extra strength. Part of me thinks I probably should have done the whole bottom with the epoxies, but I already did the bottom of the boat and then I'm gonna have the floor covers on here so it doesn't really matter. The floor covers are over here and I put the Fasco epoxies on both sides of the floor covers. So those are gonna look freaking real good. I guess another day of work. Transom is done though. Transom looks amazing. Just gotta cut these bolts off. Maybe I'll do that today. I don't know if I'll get to that, but that's a progress update. Time to get back to work. I use an angle grinder to grind off the bolts sticking out of the transom. Oh yeah. There we go. I try my best to get somewhat of a nice smooth flush finish on cutting all the bolts off. We're gonna end up putting epoxy on all of this so it's gonna end up being a very sleek finish. 
and it's gonna cover any of those remaining holes on this aluminum sheet. And I got the acetone out again. By now, you probably know what that means. Cleaning the surface and prepping it for painting. I also tape off any of the edges. And then I mix up some epoxy. This is gonna be the super slick black one because that way I can fix those rivet holes that we had to sand a bit on the bottom of the boat. Looking good. I also touch up some spots around the boat where the beige epoxy went onto the black super slick epoxy on the bottom. I ended up making way more than I needed, so I'm gonna gloop this up, and then I'm just gonna probably cover all these rivets in epoxy too, make it extremely waterproof. Butter it on a buttercup. You know what? I was gonna spray paint the back with truck bed liner. But I think this epoxy would be way, way cooler and I definitely got enough, so... Might as well, right? All right, the whole back of the boat has the epoxy on it. And whatever I had left, I just drizzled the epoxy on all the rivet holes. So this should really ensure that if I ever hit something hard and popped a rivet, it should keep the boat nice and watertight. I also noticed this little piece of metal under one of my support brackets. I use a hook to pull it out. Just noticing this. Oh, there it comes. Holy smokes, look at this penny. Time to finish painting the bottom of the boat with this duply color truck bed liner stuff. Full speed ahead. That bad boy is epoxied in there. Ain't never coming out. I'm gonna put the live well back in. There she is. In all her prettiness. Actually, I almost forgot the 4200. I add a little bit of 4200 sealant, that white stuff you see on there. And this way when I put the live well on top, it'll create a bit more of a watertight seal. We're going to tighten it down with these two bad boys right here.
I use the acetone to rub off any extra sealant. And you see all this rust? That just won't come off. So I taped off the threads on the live well water plug. And I'm going to paint this in just a moment. But first I'm going to screw the whole box down. All right, my box is back in place. I taped off the top of it. And I got this here Flex Seal, which is a liquid rubber. And since the live well is made out of rubber, I feel like this is going to be the perfect solution. And it came out freaking great. Things are really coming together here. All the black bottom paint's done. All the interior walls are sanded. Rubbed them down with acetone. Now all I gotta do is tape off the edges. Then we're gonna put the beige neutral Fasco epoxy on the interior. I'll put it on both sides of the seats. But I'm not gonna put it on top because we're gonna put C-Deck on top. We'll put that on there and put the floors in. And then we'll put the vinyl decals on it. And yeehaw, baby. We got our neutral epoxy in the beige color, and I'm just gonna gloop it on the transom and just finish painting the boat. I don't wanna bore you guys too long with any more painting stuff, so this is gonna go relatively quickly, but I just wanna give a nice layer of epoxy over all the bolts and just waterproof everything. This way water can't get through the bolts and to the wood. Check it out. Yeehaw, baby. Yeehaw. The only thing I haven't done yet is I didn't paint the tops because we're putting the sea deck on there. But boy, did I make a mess. Look at this mess. My cat stepped on the wet paint and then walked all over this. And you can't get rid of that. So I might do just a light coat of the black spray paint just to make it all black again but other than that looking good looking good i touched up the paint splatter with some more truck bed liner and boy does it look good now i mean the floor is going to be hidden anyway once i put the floor panels in it but you know it never hurts to have the whole boat just looking real sexy now that all the painting is done, I measure the tops of the seats or the benches to figure out how big I need to cut the sea deck foam and then we'll go ahead and cut our templates out. Got the foam, the EVA marine decking foam from Amazon. I'm interested to see how it's going to hold up, but I am just measured the bench size. I'm going to cut it out with a razor blade. First I'm going to outline it. Try to get a real straight line and we'll stick it on later. We're gonna put the foam on all the platforms and pretty much all the surfaces on the boat. It's gonna be freaking sick. First I outline with a pencil the shape of the cutout I wanna make. And then after that, I use the ruler and the razor blade to make a straight cut. The very first cut I do, I struggle a little bit but then I realized you don't really need to add that much force onto the razor blade and it'll just slide right down along the ruler. It's one of those things you just get better at with time. But either way, it ended up coming out looking great.
To apply the foam, I first lay it out exactly how I want it so I have a good idea of how it's going to lay. And once I know exactly the area where it's going to lay, I'm going to take a, a sander and just give it a real light sanding. Once I sand it down just a tiny bit, I'm going to take some acetone and clean the surface. Once the surface is nice and clean, I'm going to take some glue and just give it a nice even spread over the entire area where you plan on sticking down your foam. This should make sure that your foam doesn't peel off anytime soon. I'm going to peel this off. Getting nervous. I don't want to mess it up. Now we're turning back now. Well, looks good. And before I know it, all the foam is on the benches and this boat is really starting to metamorphosis, metamorph, whatever that word is. It's turning into a super beautiful looking boat. So now I'm gonna stick in the floors and that should really start bringing everything together. This is the moment where you can start to see the boat finally coming together and I can actually start seeing the vision of this boat and I'm getting really excited. There's only a couple things left to do. I got to put some foam on all the floorboards, put some decals on there and let's get her done. All right, today's the day that I try and get this John boat done. It's been a while. This has been a project. I'm not going to lie. It's way more work than I thought it was going to be. But the boat is coming together. Downstairs is coming together. Look how clean things are starting to get down here. I've been putting a lot of time into the boat, into my workshop, and just getting everything ready. Today I just picked up this three gallon fuel tank for the John boat. Come look at the boat. Oh, and it's looking cleaner out here too. I I've been cleaning. Um, it's been raining all night, so there's a little bit of water. Not much, but that's what the decks are for, so you don't have to stand on the water. But I'm about to take all the wood decks out, and I'm gonna put the sea deck. It's actually not sea deck, it's just like an EVA marine foam that I got on Amazon. And we'll be putting that on this one, on this one, and on this one. My engine is showing up in the mail today, so I'll try to get the engine on there, get the, some vinyl decals on there. I got the registration sticker. Everything should kind of come together today, and then hopefully tomorrow we can get on our maiden voyage. So let's finish up these last couple things.
I found that one of the hardest parts about laying this foam down is getting it just right. I'm still not very good at this and I'm a little nervous when I put it down and you're about to watch me completely screw up here. So I try my best to peel it off. If you're interested in the type of foam that I got from Amazon, just check the video description because I'm gonna be linking everything that I use in this video down there. Now that I got the foam on, I'm gonna take my razor blade and run it down along the edges just to make sure everything is flush and that the notches are cut out for the aluminum brackets. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's one of those skills where you just gotta do it and eventually you're gonna feel pretty comfortable. Yeah, that right there, the sheet deck. I guess for a drum boat, it's pretty good. <laughs> Well, all the panels are looking pretty cool. Looks pretty good, looks sleek. I love the black with the beige. I think it's, they accent off each other real good. I thought it would be really cool to take a Dremel tool and to Dremel a pattern into the C deck, but I'm not confident enough yet to make any kind of cool design. Eventually I would like to put the South Florida Fishing Channel logo onto the floorboards, but I figured I'm probably gonna end up messing it up, so. Maybe I'll do that another day. Just as a test, I did take one of the floorboards and gave it a black trimmed outline just to see what it would look like. After I Dremel it off, I used the solder to give it a nice clean finish. And it looked all right, but I don't think it's worth doing this to all the floor panels right now. Maybe one day. But I'm just gonna leave it at this one panel for now. Okay, 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 let's add some final touches. I'm not gonna make a tutorial on how to make vinyl stickers, but basically you take a logo or an image, you vectorize it, and then you trace it, and that'll tell your vinyl printer what to cut out of the vinyl, and that's pretty much all there is to it. This is the South Florida Fishing Channel Swordfish logo. I just got it vectorized and traced. I also have my boat numbers, the boat name, I'm gonna put the Fasco Epoxies logo on there, which looks like this once you trace it. 
The first vinyl that I'm going to print out is the rwboutdoors.com vinyl. Remember, if you want to help support this YouTube channel, you can get merch or fishing rigs off of rwboutdoors.com. I'm also making a blog post that goes over the entire process of restoring this John boat. And that blog post will also be on rwboutdoors.com. So make sure you check it out. It definitely helps the channel out. And I'm always working on making it a better site. This is what it's going to look like when it prints. And once you're ready to go, you just say cut now, push that button, and it's going to send it straight to the printer which will start cutting it out of the vinyl. Then through a process called weeding, you take a razor blade and you kind of just peel off all the vinyl that is not part of the design. Bam, and there you go, rwboutdoors.com in vinyl form. Now we just gotta put some transfer tape on top of it and it's ready to go. I finish up the rest of the vinyls and I'll see you guys down at the boat. All right, we got the goods now. We got our uh, registration tag, our boat name, boat number, a couple rwboutdoors.com stickers. We got the South Florida Fishing Channel Swordfish Beast. We even got our Fasco epoxies. Couldn't have made the boat so awesome without this stuff. So, made a decal for that. I think it'll look like a pretty sick little thing. Let's stick them on. These vinyl decals kind of remind me of the stress I felt when laying the foam flooring down because it's one of those things where once you stick it on, there ain't no going back. If you put it on crooked, it's done for. Oh no, oh no. Didn't mean to do that. Well, I guess if you don't put it on too hard you can still kind of peel it off. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. That looks freaking good. Y'all want to have a good laugh at my expense? So the vinyl decal numbers I just put on the John boat. That is for my 24 foot fiberglass Key Largo center console. I just put the wrong numbers and the wrong registration sticker on my John boat. This is the right one. So now I gotta take those off. I gotta print out new decals, which I just used the last of my black decal. So I just ordered some more on Amazon, but... <sighs> Damn it!
Wow, what a journey that has been. You made it all the way to the end of the video. I am pretty impressed. I actually have an engine on the boat already, but I'm posting another video in a couple days where we're actually gonna take her on out for a spin. You don't have to have the biggest, most awesome boat to have fun on the water because this thing right here, it's a freaking good time. I, I have just as much fun on this boat as I have on my offshore boat. It's just a completely different experience. Hopefully you guys learned something watching this or at least got inspired to maybe start a project of your own. There's so many different ways you can do this. I definitely want to camo paint it for duck season, but it just looks so good with the beige and the brown and the black accents. Woo. It really helps my channel out when you watch these videos to the end. So since you watched the video to the end, I'm gonna give you a little hint. The gift card code that's somewhere in this video for $100 is in the last half of the video. So there's a little hint for you. Remember, you can support the channel by going to rwboutdoors.com, pick up some merch, this is the offshore mahi fishing shirt. We got fishing rigs. I'm just extremely happy how this boat turned out. It is extremely comfortable. So, you know, when you're taking the lady out, you know, it's a John boat, but when you're gonna take your girl out on a date, she's gonna love this kind of sea deck on there. Hop on the bow, have herself a bush light while you scooch around the Everglades. It's gonna be a good time. And speaking of good times, I got a can of fuel over there and the old transom. And what better way to end this video by burning this old rotten transom from the old John boat, which is now freaking new John boat. Sexier than ever. This super slick is freaking slick. I can single-handedly push this John boat off of the trailer because the bottom is so slick, but y'all will have a chance to see her perform in lots and lots of adventures. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, the next two videos I'm putting out, one, I buy a $200 engine online, a brand new engine for $200 online, and I slap it on this sucker and we go fishing. You don't have to have a lot of money to go fishing on a John boat. It's an interesting engine too, I'll tell you what, but I think it's time we put this video to a rest, put this transom to a rest. What do y'all say? Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you want. Hit that subscribe button. It helps out a lot. You know, there's a certain way I feel about these transoms. There's probably a safer way to do this, but I don't care. <laughs>